important uh, sector that actually contributes greatly to the economic growth of any nations. It is an investment-led uh, sector, and uh, you agree with me that various governments, they have interest when it comes uh, to construction. So this is how we are going to go. These are the lesson outcomes. Firstly, we are going to look at the construction industry, brief history of construction safety, what it, what it was then, then what is, it is presently in terms of uh, safety, because it's very important that uh, we chronolog chronologically uh, go through uh, what construction industry is all about. Then, we are going to look at some construction fatalities and global trend, and uh, that will even enable us to have a look at the recent uh, incidents that has been happening, the one in Beirut and even the one uh, in India. So we'll just have a look at all, all of that. Then the main uh, key element, which is the framework for managing HSE, which is actually the safety uh, system management that we are actually uh, going to showcase this morning, which is very key, is vital, is a proactive tools that we all need to use and we all need to be aware of when it comes to construction industry. What are the hazard and effect management process? We're going to see all of this as we move on. The importance of planning and adequate procedures. We are going to look at the performance monitoring, legal requirement and responsibility then the reason why we need to implement a safety management system in a construction industry. All these things are going to add up into this section and uh, I will appreciate that we'll, we'll listen and uh, we enjoy the, this, this section. Then of course, we cannot downplay the roles of uh, HSE professionals when it comes to uh, safety management. We might, if time permits, do a brain jig preparing a risk assessment for a particular one single task so that I want to see some of our responses when it comes to, to that. Then uh, conclusion. So we need to uh, kick start by way of introduction, just like I said, construction industry is, you agree with me, is that is one of the most hazardous and um, risky industries. Um, it has been known that despite most of the significant uh, improvements that have been put in place by various uh, occupational safety and health uh, bodies, especially the Act of 1970, we still find out and, that injuries and fatality rates are actually happening when it comes to construction industry compared to other industries. And uh, this are actually cited by Bureau of uh, Labor Statistics. And um, it actually involves numerous dangerous and difficult simultaneous tasks that are very dynamic in nature. You see in the construction industry, that's where you see lifting operations being going on. There's working at height, there's dredging, there's um, pressure testing activity, all in one particular site. Why? Because the, the, the site is very heterogeneous when it comes to activities that is uh, happening. And uh, these are some of the reasons why you agree with me that because of the high risk activities that is going on, it's actually very, very important for each and every one of us to be aware that the only thing that can actually help us is um, safety management system, how effective it is. Then the accident rates is actually considered to be a common matrix for benchmarking, uh, benchmarking uh, the construction safety uh, performance. How do I mean? You see uh, some construction industry uh, at the end of their financial year, they will tell you, ah, we've done so well uh, compared to last year. Last year, we killed five people. But this year, we're able to, we, 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 we killed two persons. Uh, and if you look at it, is that the, the right way to benchmark safety performance? The answer is no because a soul of one person is actually very, very important because it has a multiplier effect when it comes to the family, the person represents those people that are depending on, on that person and a soul for that matter. Killing one person actually is a no-no when it comes to this industry that we are looking at. And uh, that has actually led to um, concerns when it comes to uh, uh, construction safety because it's a concern for you and I, 
especially a concern for American Society of Safety Professionals in which all of us represent what we need to do to ensure that all these things are actually nipped in the boat. And the key way to go is managing construction safety risks, which requires an integrated approach, which actually is what we are about talking uh, this morning. So, like I said, let's look at brief construction uh, um, history as it relates to safety. Late 1800s uh, regulations that we have today, the wiring mandatory as it were, though they have, but they were not all that mandatory. So it's very important that uh, we know this. There is no workers insurance compensation, even in case of uh, accident uh, happening. If you see anybody that's oh, injured, you, you will not be able to see whether uh, there is uh, compensation uh, being given to such persons. And even the regulatory commissions that were formed with the intention of uh, ensuring a safe work uh, environment, you find that they have little power and no influence during this time. Those are some of the things that we can take from uh, late 1800s. Uh, and when we come to uh, 1900 and 1930, you can see that almost 300 workers out of every 100 uh, thousands were killed on the job. Invariably, this is telling us that it's almost one uh, person per day, one person per day, which is which is definitely not impressive at all. And uh, when we come to insurance compensations, there are people that will just be lucky even to get insurance compensations, even just like now that uh, some some persons who are injured they get compensation then this was not so then the federal Comp uh, compensation act uh, later they established uh, benefits to workers who sustain injuries so these are some of the improvements that we find out during uh, those uh, days while in 1930s we actually have uh, everything changed when we look at the Golden Gate Bridge that was built, that, that, that's from San Francisco uh, through the Pacific Ocean, then uh, uh, entry into Martin County. That was the first major uh, construction project to actually make safety mandatory. And you can see that that was why a lot of persons, when you say you are doing construction activities, people are dying here and there, which is not supposed to, to be. For any work class construction project, it is impossible to achieve it without thoroughly ensuring that an effective safety management system is actually put in place. This is very, very important. Now, what it is in 70s onward, and uh, I would like to say that in 1970, just like I did mention, the Occupational Safety and Health Act was actually passed. And what does this act entails? is to assure safe and healthy working conditions for everybody that are working in construction industry and even in other industry as it were. So it leads to authorization of enforcement of the standard developed under this act. And this act actually led to the creation of a Institute of Safety, uh, uh, Institute for Occupational Safety and Health uh, globally which uh, conducts research and makes safety rec uh, recommendations. And I need to say on a global level too, even uh, American Society of Safety Professionals, they are actually even into this too. Even the, our Nigerian chapter, the um, Institute of Safety Professional of Nigeria, even if you look at the Act uh, 2014, of course, all these are actually geared even to ensuring the, the safety of life, the safety of uh, personnel while working in various industry, and uh, more, more importantly, even in the uh, construction industry. The same also applies to the uh, Ghana uh, Occupational Safety and Health. So it's good we have the chronological um, information concerning what is actually happening when it comes to construction uh, safety. Now, these are the global trend for work-related activities and diseases. You can imagine uh, globally people are estimated to die every day from occupational accidents. 1,000 persons die from occupational accidents. And if you ask me, most of these things, because of the heterogeneous uh, activities, simultaneous activities going on in construction industry, you agree with me that when uh, heavy duty trucks are maneuvering, when the, there is excavation, when there's lifting activities, 
when their personnel working at height, uh, if all these things are, there are not procedures, there are no right processes that has been put in place, you agree with me that this is exactly what we get. 1,000 dying from occasional accident. And this is a no-no. This we cannot allow to continue. How about unsafe at unsafe conditions? We have 7,500 people, these men and women that are actually dying every day. You can imagine like uh, in the construction uh, industry, you, you want to carry out an activity maybe near water where you know that of, of course there's possibility of uh, falling into water. You can imagine working in that environment and people are not putting on their personal float of, uh, flotation devices and they don't know how to swim. What is going to be the result? Your, your guess is as good as mine. You also see thousand die from work-related uh, diseases. I know in the construction industry, we have a lot of chemicals, we have a lot of materials that actually need to, to look into when it comes to the material safety data sheet. And when this thing is not being looked into, these are something that what is actually going to uh, result into. So we need to understand it. On the global trend of construction fatality, you can see from the table that's uh, being showcased, you can see that uh, the trend, fatality, construction fatality every year, they are in hundreds. And 2018, we have 1,008, which is actually a no-no. And that is why we need to ensure that when we talk about effective um, safety management system, it actually needs to be effective because it's a proactive uh, system that is process that is being used even to manage most of all these uh, construction uh, industries. Let's have a cue at the, some of the example of construction accident. Like the, the one a case in point is the collapse of scaffolding at a construction site in a power plant, a cooling tower that was in Eastern uh, China. You can imagine 74 persons died in a day. These are human beings. They, these are not animals. These are human beings that have families to feed. It's very, very uh, painful to see all these things happening. And uh, that is the essence why you and I will really need to know what we need to do at any point in time. Then the major uh, jetty crane disaster at Industan Shipyard. I want to appreciate Mr. Tijani Bello, who actually uh, shared this uh, on the platform. It was very, very, very good uh, uh, sharing section. And Ask me, even though information are still not uh, clear, investigation is, is still on, on the way. We, we are able to uh, have that 11 people died in that incident. And it's actually very, very painful. This, of course, is avoidable. Most of all these accidents that are happening, they are avoidable. Like we normally say in every forum that accidents are actually caused. Because if you put an equipment on the ground with no interaction with man, you agree with me that that uh, equipment is going to be there. But the moment man interacts with that equipment, definitely we need to watch, watch it. How about the explosion that happens uh, even in uh, Beirut? I think uh, Lebanon was in on the 6th of August. These are all the things that we don't actually uh, expect to be happening. For the major jetty crane disaster that happened, though, even though the investigation is going on, we have been made to understand that even the safety management system were not, were, were not applied. So these are some things that we, we need to uh, understand. Now, look at a typical construction work site. This is a busy construction site with machineries and workers. This is how typical construction site looks like. You can see, cranes, you can see trucks, trucks offloading, either loading, a crane lifting, maneuvering, you can see personnel here and there. And this is, this, this is a source of a cause of concern as it were. And you can ask me if in this kind of situation, you don't have a robust safety management system to manage this. I tell you every day, you, be, you see people actually dying because of this uh, poor safety management system. So this just to, to show you how busy a construction uh, sites can be. And most of the construction sites we have, even in Nigeria, they are equally busy uh, 
like uh, is being showcased here. Now, the HSC management system that we are actually talking about, what it, it is actually, the, is actually an integrated approach where all the HSC factors are effectively managed. Uh, and the, the main point is to reduce risks as shared with execution of any work in either in construction industry, either in manufacturing, in oil and gas, and what have you. And uh, I, I want to say it's, it's very good that this presentation is coming at this time. Why? Because it's, it will actually enable us to be able to uh, ensure that the, the incident that we are hearing now, we can be able to, when we go back to our various uh, operational areas, we can be able to ensure that, oh, the, these things, of course, are actually put into practice. When we talk about a management system, it's a systematic way of identifying hazards and managing risks that is related to workplace uh, activities, just like a construction site. And uh, ISO 45001-2008 actually showcased that is equally focused on the risk-based thinking approach, which of course, even in, is in tandem with this HSC management system. Do not forget that it was actually OSHA 18001-2007, which is now ISO 45001-2018. It's basically showcased the HSC management system from the top management down even to the shop floor and all the necessary documentations and what we need uh, to, to be aware of, they're actually uh, there when it comes to safety management system. And what other things does this, uh, does this um, management does? It helps organization to also fulfill its legal requirements and other requirements. Do not forget that we have lots and lot of legal requirements, but that one alone is not enough because we need to have a totality and encompassing process and compassing system that actually needs to work because uh, when, when, you, when we say legal requirements alone, you see a lot of people, they don't even understand the legal requirement. And all these things is actually what is culminating into failures here and there and the system breakdown and what have you. And uh, this actually help us to fulfill the legal requirement. Now, what are the characteristics of an effective HSC management? One, it is easy to understand and implement. It's not something that is out of the moon, it's not bogus, it's something that we can relate with. And it needs to be used and understood by all employees. Gone are the days where safety management system procedures and processes is going to be prepared, even in the confines of, of an office. No, that is that is not expected. Even if if you have that management system, everybody needs to understand because we need to be carried along from the top management, even down, even to the shop floor. And that is why, if you ask me, most of these casual workers that we engage, even in in uh, managing uh, construction activities, they actually needs to be grafted even into this management system. Even the subcontractors that we, 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 uh, we contract some of the, the, the work uh, to, they actually need to understand the safety management system. They don't just need to come into an operational site and just uh, continue working. I can tell you that if I go for an inspection or maybe a site visibility of a construction company, I will know from the gate what their HSC management system is all about. And because it's something that, of course, you will see, and that's where we are actually going this morning. And it should also be adaptable to allow changes and improvement in any organization. Now, what are the uh, safety management system, the, like I said, is the framework for managing HSC. We have eight key elements, starting from leadership and commitment, policies and strategic objective, organizational responsibility, down to management review, auditing, and what have you. Let's just see what all these ones actually address. Now, when we talk of leadership and commitment, it is very, very important. This is top-down safety commitment and company uh, culture which is very key to any uh, success of uh, HSC management system. You see, if you have the, the, the management need to set the tone 
for um, managing construction activities. You cannot have a leadership that is not committed when it comes to safety. And when we talk about leadership commitment, it needs to be visible. One of the days whereby maybe you, you have a construction activity going on in a particular location and the, the project management team and in another state, and they are not visiting even the construction site to be able to see and to be able to understand the feelings and understand even what the, the, the workers are passing. Then I'm telling you that that safety management system is bound to fail because uh, as a manager or as uh, as uh, an executive either general manager or either supervisors or what have you you are all we are all under leadership uh, role and it needs to be visible you need to make sure that you attend meetings you uh, you showcase campaigns and you deploy resources if you ask me some Construction industries, you see, most especially the casual workers, it pains me and it beats my imaginations. When you see some casual workers, they will tell them, bring your PPE from home. Oh, why? They are human beings. At times, you notice that they, they, they get them, they employ them just on a daily basis, they come, they go, and there is no specialized training for them even to understand the processes. Tell me, how are they going to ensure that um, there is no accident? These are some of the things that leadership needs to do. And these are the commitment in which we are talking about. I will talk about policy and strategic objective, very, very key. This is actually the company intention. The policy is actually going to, to show and uh, show the, 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 the line of actions for every construction industry, every top management, every processes that is going to be deployed. What are the objectives that has been set? Are they smart? The objectives will be smart. It, it must be measurable. It must be, it must be realistic. It was a time, time ban. We don't just cast it on it. Or, 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 it's not just cast uh, on, on, on the stone. What I'm saying in essence is that you need to set an objective that is realistic, that on this site on this project oh, the, the key thing is that we don't want to kill anybody we don't want to record any uh, lost time injury and we want to try as much as possible to ensure that whatsoever we do we maintain that people of course they are not hurt and they stay alive to go back and see their families and we'll talk about organizational responsibility resources standards and documentations is also very very key the industry that we are in needs to be organized what are the rules and responsibility do each does everybody have their rules and responsibility being spelled out what are the responsibilities we have resources we want to buy um, we want to buy um, ppe are they the right specification you see some persons who just say just go and buy any ppe why because they've actually be dead for the for, for the project in the sense that even by the time they get the, the job, it's, they cannot actually break even. And a lot of people always use profits as a benchmarking, even in construction industry. I tell you, if you have a very good safety record, it actually helps you and enables you to get more jobs. And that is actually the way it's supposed uh, to go. And we talk about uh, documentations. Yeah, we have a lot of documentations. What are the master document registers, the, the drawings? And let us not forget that even this uh, safety uh, management system we are talking about is actually starts from the conceptual stage. The design phase, when you have your front end engineering design, detailed engineering design, because you need to factor in safety into it. So that by the time it eventually translates into execution of the project on construction site you, you'll be able to at least manage it perfectly you cannot tell me that maybe in the construction site you want to fabricate like a manifold or of great magnitude and you did not factor in how it's going to be lifted is it going to be lifted by a crane is it going to be lifted by a, a boogie all these things needs to be factored in and uh, let, let me just uh, uh, move ahead. Then the hazard and effect management, which is an education and risk evaluation for all activity is very, very key. From hazard and effect management, 
planning and procedures, implementation and monitoring, they are actually very, very key. I will see as we move on that even the hazard and effect management uh, process is actually the art of this HSC management system. If it is missed out, then we are actually inviting um, incident or accident on any construction site. It is very, very key. We cannot overemphasize the importance of risk assessment, identification of hazard, because every day that you work, things change. What the equipment you put here this morning, by, by the time you come back tomorrow and there is no checks on it, you agree with me that there might be failure. So all these things are actually uh, needs to be uh, put in the in, in, in right perspectives. Let me cite, cite a very good uh, example of uh, this um, HSC management uh, process. Like on a GINA project, which uh, I, I was uh, part of, we, of course, the, there is a plan you know, to build a carbon steel uh, a workshop, which is about uh, 20 something meters high. And it was the risk assessment uh, that actually enabled us to be able to see that how do we do this kind of work? Because we are going to do lifting of all the steels, all the trusses and everything, the, the ceiling and what have you at that height. So of course, it, it does not take um, um, much time to be able to know that, of course, we need to get a mobile elevated work platform of that height. And when we deploy that to site, you see, Everybody they were able to walk safely. It was as if they were on, on the ground on that platform and were able to execute this. These are what some of the things a, a management system has to do. Now, like I said, the, the hemp is actually the heart of uh, HSC management system. Uh, it's just for, to control all risks in the workplace and also manage the impact failures in control. And they are actually, a, a, divided into four elements. That's the hazard identification, the risk assessment uh, itself, how you control the risk, and to, to, uh, there is failure, what are the recovery uh, measures? And when we do that, when we talk about controls, we have a hierarchy of controls, elimination, which is the most important. Like if you want to carry out an operation and uh, you, you, you want to do a lifting operation, and you notice that there is this particular sling, that as uh, some of the wires that is already defective, you remove it. That is the elimination we are talking about. You don't use it. You don't manage it. You remove it. Then when we talk about substitution, of course, there are some hazardous equipment or materials that can be substituted for less hazardous, hazardous ones. These are some of the things. And very importantly, a general control which is very, very key like in the designing of uh, any construction activity. Like, let's, uh, let me give an instance um, during the uh, construction activity for this agenda also. Uh, we had uh, an incident on one of the uh, flow, flow tree. Uh, we noticed that the clamp, the clamp opens in two way. And meanwhile, it needs to be held in place before fitting. So it was after the incident that we now realized that the engineering control should have actually done it in a way that that clamp can have like a, a stopper that will help to hold it when actually that operation wants to uh, commence. So these are some of the things that we need to actually look into when it comes to that. Then about administrative controls too, which involve the job, job pattern to reduce the uh, exposure of particular um, activities that has been undertaken. And of course, the last, which is the PP, is just like uh, every one of us know that is the last line of uh, defense, as it were. Now, planning and procedure, these are also very, very important. You, there must be adequate planning whenever you are preparing even to go. Sorry, before, before I go to planning, I need to re-emphasize concerning the risk assessment that the risk assessment is not actually done by only one single person. In fact, I need to say that it's actually those people that are actually going to be involved in that activity with HSC personnel to give guidance. They are the ones that need to be involved. It needs to be holistic and you need to ensure that you go through every, every stage, every tax steps to ensure that is done. And when we want to do that, then when we now want to 
go into the activity proper, you draw up a, a job safety analysis, which of course needs to be developed to and reviewed before every operation. So back to planning and procedure. That, like I said, there must be adequate planning towards the preparation and execution. There must be specific HSC uh, plan that of course need to include some performance target. All these things need to be uh, put in place. And the HSC plan needs to be smart, simple, measurable, achievable, realistic, and time bound. How about procedures? Very, very important. Procedure and work instruction. I've seen a lot of cases whereby the, the procedures is only the exclusive of the supervisors. This is not supposed to be. As a supervisor, you are the chief safety officer or chief safety personnel of your task group. And you must make sure that all these things are, are well known to uh, people under your, under your uh, group that want to actually prosecute that uh, uh, particular war. So it needs to be looked into, it needs to be followed, it needs to be implemented, and there must be clarity. Because if there's no clarity, you find that one person that is not actually aware or does not understand what the procedure is saying might be the person that would jeopardize even the life of uh, whoever that is working in that, uh, on that uh, particular uh, task. Permit to work system, these are some of the documentations that need uh, to be put in place so that uh, the work can go on uh, seamlessly. Oftentimes, you've seen some persons who just come, oh, our ogre said we should do this task. And that is why the visibility of a safety personnel is actually very, very important in ensuring that they are guided and they ensure that all these things are actually being averted. Like I said, it's just an overview because this thing is something that we can use a lot of this even to uh, showcase. Now the implementation, just like I said, the hazard and effect management planning and the procedure, the implementation and performance monitor. This implementation is the do part of the DEMI uh, PCDA cycle. Like the planning and the procedures, we have seen it. You, of course, you must plan adequately, ensure that people are actually being aware. Then the do part, which is the implementation, is very, very important. How do you go about the implementation? The people that are actually going to prosecute that, that job, are they well informed? Have we checked the equipments? Have we checked the materials? Have we ensured that all the chemicals that need even to be to be used for that activities, they are actually uh, being taken care of? There is material safety data sheet that is posted on site. It's not supposed to be in a file. It needs to be posted on site. People should, should see, even like the fuel dump uh, area where you collect um, diesel and stuff like that. You need to write a single procedure of what and what needs to be done. And you see a lot of these uh, operational health challenges that we, we find out. Don't, don't, don't forget that we have um, cement, we have acetone paint and all that. These are some of the things that, of course, they are chemical bees that we needs to be handled even uh, professionally. And people that handle them, they actually need to understand that, okay, what I'm adding, these are the hazard that is actually inherent in it. So when we talk about implementation, this area, a lot of persons are not actually getting it. And when we come to implementation, have you checked the, 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 the right um, procedure that is going to be put in place? Have you done the fitness to work for uh, people that are going to work, the um, contractor that is going to be engaged maybe to manage an aspect of that uh, job? Have they been uh, actually put through this, your own uh, safety management system so that they will not jeopardize even the activities that is happening in the construction site? These are some of the things that need to be done in, 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 in implementation. And if that is done, you agree with me that then the next thing is performance monitoring. You need to monitor the performance. You need to ensure that, okay, there are inspections that is being carried out. There is behavioral-based safety programs that is being, being carried out. A lot of uh, 
performance, performance monitor, monitoring needs to take place. You need to do safety meet, meetings. You need to do campaigns. You need to ensure that even within uh, the, the environment, people are made to understand the two box talk was very brief and concise and go straight to the point at that particular point in time. These are some of the performance uh, monitoring uh, process that uh, needs to be deployed whenever uh, this activity is uh, going to uh, commence. Now, these are the indicators. We have both leading and lagging indicator. Uh, you see HSE observations, you need to deploy, you see you act. Personnel must be able to understand the process. When they see an hazard, they need to commit to it. They need to correct it before it don't uh, into an incident. So how about the HS inspection? What are the level of training? The emergency evacuation drills, even in construction site, of course, when in case of emergency, you need to have a site uh, clinic and you need to have all your fire extinguishers in case of fire being deployed and make sure that they are certified. All these things are very important. Even the smoke detectors, are they functional? Maybe in the fire is going to raise an alarm. All these things and the management to need to con conduct a walkthrough, which is very, very important. If management are conducting walkthrough and people are seeing them, of course, it's, it gives them that uh, confidence that yes, we are good to go. This management is actually uh, committed. And that is the way to go. When talk about lag, lagging indicators, of course, these are the numbers we don't want to see. One of my friends says, uh, when we are talking of zero fatalities, zero fatal cases, this is the first time that zero will be having very good impact because nobody will want to score zero. But if you see zero in any of the lagging indicators, that means it's a sign that you are doing well. How ironic. So these are some of the things that needs to uh, be measured too. And when you measure this, it up us to now see where we are. What are the things that actually needs to be done? Now, what are the legal requirements and responsibilities? Like uh, the Safety, Health and uh, Welfare at Work Act 2005 actually tells, give requirements for employers. It's not business as usual. You don't just kill human beings just for the sake of uh, making profit. No, it's a no-no. You have to manage and conduct your work activity in such a manner as to ensure the safety of uh, and the welfare of employees. You inform them of the hazard to safety and health and make sure that you provide the system of work that actually plan well organized and performed, maintained and revised as appropriate so that uh, there will be no risk. And of course, every employee is too. They have even their rules and responsibility under on the, on the OSHA Act. Each employee, of course, will always must comply with the standards, rules, and regulations and uh, other issues. Then em employees shall use safety equipment, personal protective uh, equipment, and other devices that uh, is being given to them. Uh, le let me say this, should there be an incident and you notice that the employee is defaulted in the use of uh, the PP that is being provided to him, then you will not be entitled even to any compensation as it were. Why? Because it, it did not follow the right, uh, the, the right way. He did not ensure uh, compliance when it comes to that. So this needs to, to, to be looked into. Employees shall also have the right to report on safe and on, uh, on safe and on healthy working conditions to appropriate uh, officials. So these are some of the other regulations that actually help pain. Do not forget that I made mention that the regulations are not only enough. But of course, they are very key to a uh, management system. We have a health and safety work, uh, um, health and safety at work act, SAWA, reporting of injuries, that redor, manual handling of operations, regulations, control of substance as adults to, to health, working at tight regulations, PP regulations. These are regulations that has been provided to actually help to manage the uh, effectively the HSC system in any construction industry. Now, why implement a safety management system? 
is is very very easy. Uh, I will be rounding up now. Safety management is a change management. If you have a work site that have a good safety culture, you agree with me that it actually changes the entire um, workforce because they know ah the manage the top management whenever they come to site they wear their PPE. Who am I not to comply? So this is very important. Then it's also communicating the new safety plan. Just like I said, it's, it should be well understood and communicated even to uh, all employees. It's not something that needs to be put on the shelf or something that needs to, to, to be known to only the, the, the supervisors. The answer is no. So it, there must be communications, workers' participation when it comes to all these things. And it's designing accountability with safety yeah. leaders. As safety leaders, we are accountable for the effectiveness of this uh, safety management system, which is very, very important. And of course, just like yeah. the likes, uh, previous slide said, compliance with standards and regulations, that is uh, what it helps to do. Measuring change to improve. Of course, by the time uh, you get to management uh, review, and uh, like auditing, management review, this actually help us to know how we are fed in the course of the uh, prosecution of that uh, project. So it measures change to uh, improve and it's actually enforced transparency. Everybody, it's, it's, it makes the workflow, everybody is transparent. You'll be able to know that, oh, this is the next step because this other person is aware of activity that is going to take place. And is also making the business case. You cannot see, a construction industry who has who is fond of killing people every year to, to to continue to get a job so it actually make business case when you notice that everybody are, are, are fine work is going on there's no lost time injury everybody is doing well of course it gives you that uh, impetus into getting a uh, more job a few incidents happy employees do not forget that there are hidden causes, uh, there are direct causes. Even when somebody is injured, you can see the emotional trauma that other workers that are working with him actually will exhibit. It will not make them to, to be happy. You say, ah, this company is always fond of killing people. So on construction activity, it is very, very key. Just like I say, I want to emphasize re that a work class construction project, it, of course, cannot be carried out effectively without safety management system. So it's very, very important. And it also leads to more productive uh, operations because by time uh, there is no accident because that one will actually take time, time of investigation, time of uh, um, meeting, while you're supposed to be on site and all those things is actually affect. Then less risks and workman compensation. There'll be less risk because actually the risk assessment it's, it's been done, it's been deployed to site. Everybody is aware, everybody actually participated into it. And you agree with me that when that is done, everybody knows the hazard that is actually inherent in that activity. And fewer fines are more investors. These are some of the reasons uh, why implementing a safety management system that is actually effective. Then what is our role? As HSC professionals, we have a vital role to play. Like an all-star HSE team is key to ensure HSC management system is being properly implemented. Um, this is actually not, um, not only the rules, but we must focus on management, the effectiveness of that HSC management system. We are to provide safe, secure, and healthy working condition for all the workers, preventing accident and injury. Honestly, it, it, HS management system is not a reactive uh, management system. It's a proactive system to be able to enable us to see what management and every other person's workers to the shop floor have to provide in ensuring we work safely in, 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 in construction industry. Do not forget that the interaction of man, machinery, equipment, and the environment is actually very vital. Just like the picture I showed uh, previously, you can see how construction industry is actually is on a very good day. So it's very, very important that HSC personnel must be visible 
at least to give directions and implementing proper guidelines and regulation and ensuring compliance. As an HSE professional, we must be able to speak the language of, of, of the project manager. We should be able to speak the language of the supervisors. When they are bringing the, uh, scope or documentations, we should be able to have input and have understanding. At times, scope of work for, for, for that particular work, we need to digest it, to be able to know and uh, abreast ourselves with regulations. Because you agree with me that most of the consulting industries, these um, the, the project uh, managers or what have you, they are always interested in production, production, yeah. production. Can you address us, CSP? Yeah. Okay. Hello. Let me round up. Yes, please. Our time okay. is up. Yeah. All right. Let me round up. Sorry about Thank that. Thank you. So, um, unfortunately, I want us to do a risk assessment here, but of course, when we when it's done, uh, may, maybe by the time is. Um, sent to, to the platform, we can just do, um, do it on ourselves, on our own. Let, let me take an excerpt from Peter Drucker. He said, the first duty of business is to survive. And the guiding principle of business economies is not the maximization of profit, but the avoidance of loss. So this is very, very key. And this is something that we need to look into. Very, very important. In conclusion, the construction industry experiences high injury and fatality rate and is far from achieving a zero injury goal. So focusing on safety on construction site is actually very critical. It protects workers from illness, injuries, and death and helps keep jobs on schedule by avoiding accident-related delays. Thus, the effective safety management systems are critical to the ongoing effort to improve safety of lives and properties and reduce environmental impacts of activity. Thank you very much for having me. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Engineer Festus or Echo CSP. And I, I believe all participants will agree with me that uh, that was well delivered. And uh, more importantly, he emphasized the role of safety professionals, which is key at this trying time. And he also make mention of the multiple fatality that results from lack of uh, uh, complying with safety requirement on construction site and various uh, example has been uh, demonstrated and uh, one of it is also the one of Beirut uh, which we are hearing at the background and they are not trying to agree with it but I see it as one of the risks that we face that is due to some chemicals that were stored in a building these are explosive chemical will now give way but they are disputing that uh, premises that is not uh, the situation so he has mentioned that but more importantly he said the safety professional must be able to speak the language of the pm of the project manager and also speak the business language as safety professional and he, he also make mention please if you are online please mute if he also make mention of the fact that as safety professional we must be visible we must be visible. In most cases, at what happens. In most cases, what happened in the construction industry and safety professional will always want to pass the blame back to top management. And in my own, in my own belief is that we are not communicating. If you are not getting management buy-in, see that you are not communicating. And we need to take that role to be able to communicate. So we only have uh, about uh, three minutes. If I have some questions on the chat or comments, we'll be able to uh, take it and also share it with uh, everyone. Admin, do we have some questions? Yes, I have. Uh, uh, we can just uh, make it open, let people indicate yes. by raising their hand, then we'll Inter take it. Interact. Yes. Okay, can, can we make it open so that we can have people raise their hand? Yeah, it's open. Their hand. Okay, so members, you can raise your hand if you have any question. Let's take it. Please. But uh, one critical, before we go into that, while they're raising their hands, we'll need to present certificate. I think our... 
Our P is here to do that. P, are you ready so that I can project the certificate? Okay. Well, I should go um, ahead. Yes, you, you, are, you are permitted to go ahead. Mr. Okay, let me project it so that you present it. Okay. Let's go ahead. We are presenting uh, a certificate to our presenter in yes. our first also record CSP. Yes. On behalf of My, SSP. Yes. Okay, go ahead. Sir. My P, go ahead, sir. Okay. Uh, good morning, all. Uh, I will say I welcome everyone and I thank everyone for this wonderful presentation. And on behalf of ASSP Nigeria chapter, we here by present this certificate of recognition to Mr. Olai Wola Testus Orepo, certified safety professional speaker on behalf of HSCP on the effective HSC management system in construction industry during the knowledge sharing series five of August 8, 2020. On behalf of ASSP, we hereby present this certificate to you. Congratulations, sir. Thank you very much. I really appreciate this. Um, I'm yes, very grateful. Thank you very much. It's much yes, appreciated. Uh, thank you very much, Engineer Festus Repo. We have, uh, thank you, my PE. Yes, sir. We have one of the participants raising hands. And for your information, we have uh, members joining. We have some members and some participants joining from Ghana. And we have some key professional members here online as well joining us. I have uh, uh, Engineer Jamil. I can see Engineer Jamil. I can see Engineer Kudo. So I have Mr. Akinyemi Johnson. Raising on me, you are now being unmuted now to pass your comment. Go ahead. Can you hear me, Johnson? You're unmuted. Are you there? <laughs> it's like. Right. Yeah, good. Mr. Johnson, are you unmuted now? Okay. It's like. Okay. We. I mean, it's like uh, it's having a difficulty. So let's take uh, Emmanuel you while we wait for. Mr. Okay, go ahead. Yeah, we have Emmanuel. Yes. Oh, Emmanuel you. Let's hear you, please. Unmute. Can we unmute him, please? Because he's muted here. Emmanuel is muted. Okay, you are muted. Yeah, good morning, all. Morning. morning. Yes, thank you for the wonderful position by Mr. Festu Soreko. It was really enlightening. Uh, please, I want to request that um, can we get this um, presentation slide for reference, please? Okay, thank you. That will be made available to you. I uh, for all participants, a link will be sent to you where it's been uploaded, and you can download from there on the ASSP Nigerian Chapter website. Uh, okay, please. Thank, thank you very much for that. Thank you. Daddy, where is he? Where is he? Can Johnson speak now? Hi, uh, hey, sir. Okay, go ahead, Mr. Johnson. You're muted. Okay, good morning, and uh, once again, thank you for the presentation. Thank you. On the slide where the presenter talked about uh, the safety, that's implementing the safety management system. Okay. I think whether second or the last bullet point, if I'm not yeah. very sure now. So uh, is less risk and workman compensation. Is that one? Very good, very good. So, okay. I think that should be workmen's, not workman's compensation, workmen's compensation. Okay. Okay. okay thank, thank you. Thank you for taking note yeah. of that. Thank that you. Just now, it's a great right. one anyway. Well done. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Good. 
So we have uh, Moti. Who is this? Another hand raised up here. Moto he five plus. Uh, if you can, you know, sometimes they don't uh, write their name yeah. fully. Okay. So since let's, you know your hand is up, please let's hear you. Let's hear you. Uh, is it Ere? There's another one, Ere Eyala. Ere Eyala, you're unmuted. Let's hear you, please. Ere Eyala, let's hear you. Okay, hello, good morning. Morning, you're welcome. Uh, 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 I just wanted to know if uh, ASSP is uh, present in Abuja so that I can. Do they have any activities in Abuja? Yeah, we, we, we do have activities in Abuja and we have members in Abuja. And uh, you can actually chat with the, uh, with the ESCO after this section. And I, I hope you got an, a, an email when yes, you registered. I... So there is yes. an email attached to that as well. So you can just chat up with the executive. They'll be able to link you up with members and the activity that happens in Abuja. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. So we have uh, in Indukwe edit. Okay. Let's have Indukwe edit. Yes. Indukwe edit. Go ahead. Good morning. <coughs> so if we are not having in the that we have Basi Epo. Good Can morning, we have Basi Epo come up? That is up now. Good morning, sir. Good morning. Morning. Okay, sir. Just to add up to the question, uh, Mr. Victor also asked, I have uh, the same question. Jack. What if, uh, like uh, from what Mr. Festo just said about the leadership and commitment what if as a safety head of a site and then uh, you now have a change of uh, leadership which has no safety commitment and then you had a fatality uh, in incident does that mean that the safety head of that site have actually failed come again okay sir assuming on a site and then you as the you are a safety head, for instance, and then there is no management commitment. And then you then had, had a, a fatality on that side. Does that mean that the safety head has failed if there should be a kind of a sanction, sir? Uh, thank you very much for that, for that uh, comment. At any situation that happened on site, it is not your responsibility. You are just an advisor. Please, observation, to, observation, to, yeah. Let the presenter answer. Okay. Yeah, thank you very much. Answer. Thank you very much, uh, Unduke Edet. Just to follow the line of thought of my area director, um, of course, you as a safety person, you have a role, just like I said. Um, <clears throat> you, you see, the, the, the leadership of a particular uh, industry as relates to construction, you see, they can only fail when you notice that there is no visibility and what have you. Just like the question you just said now, that during the changing over, I, like I said, the HSC management system is not a secret document. During the changing over, of course, there should be like, um, um, what is it called? Like uh, handing over, or what have you. And there must be an HSE manager. Of course, it's the responsibility of that HS manager to keep abreast of the new management that is coming in. But if that is not done, if that is not done and it's realized that, of course, this thing is not actually done and you, you have played your part, of course, the leadership at that material point in time have actually failed. They have failed. But you, you have done your bit. And uh, the HS manager that you are reporting to might actually have done his own bits too. So in that situation, of course, uh, it, it has failed because the HS management system, it needs to be grafted into the 
uh, HS management, management system so that it follows suit. Because, of course, there is a, like a, a procedure, like, like a plan that you need to, to just follow into. Like most of this uh, construction uh, industry that we are into, we have a lot of changing of project manager or what have you. And that does not mm -hmm. mean that the, um, the, the project will, will, will not continue. The new person that is coming in must actually follow through all the necessary process. But if he fails to do that and anything happens and it's visible that it's actually coming from the management uh, position because there are some accidents too that happens that is actually not uh, from the management. You see, it can be from the supervisor, it can be from the uh, shop floor. And let's not forget that attitude, safety culture is very, very vital in construction industry. The attitude and behavior of, pers uh, of personnel is very, very key. And if that is not done, then, of course, we can say that the uh, leadership has actually failed. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Uh, President. Thank you. While, yeah. we are, while we are on, I also want to acknowledge the uh, former regional vice president of uh, ASSP for Region 9, in the person of Ashu Galapati joining us. He's oh. also <laughs> joining us here from all the way from Kuwait. He's part of this section. Mr. Ashuk, you're welcome. Thank you for being part of this section. Ashuk, and, welcome. Uh, thank you. Thank you for coming. Yeah, yeah welcome. Thank you. <laughs> we are proud of you. I'm, I'm just enjoying your session, actually. So thank you for thank joining you for, us. Yeah. Thank, you, thank you very much. Thank you very much. It's a great opportunity for me to understand the construction safety issues. Thank you. you uh, focusing on the subject. Thank you. I appreciate it. And so uh, can... I understand uh, Daniel is there on the line. Daniel, I think, uh, happy birthday, Daniel. I think today is your birthday. Down, Anna. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we will celebrate. I think Make we have two emeritus in the house. your hand is off. Wish them happy birthday Hello. at the end of the session. Hello, Merci. How are you? That's good to know. Thank you very much and appreciate your uh, support to the community. Okay, can we go ahead? All right. So I think, uh, uh, Mr. President, Madam President, are you on? Yes, sir. So on, be yeah. on behalf, I want to hand over now to Madam President. I think they have one or two information to pass on to us. And uh, after then, we'll be calling this off because we are behind our time schedule for like about 11 minutes now. So we want to like uh, release the team for attending. So Mr. President, go ahead. Thank you, sir. Thank you. It's an honor to have you coordinate the, the August section for us. We really appreciate it. Special thanks to the presenter who had done excellently well today, starting from the history and bringing us to terms about all we need to do in an um, effective uh, HSC management system. We really appreciate you, Engineer Festus. Thank you so much. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you for uh, the opportunity. I, uh, I was logged off. I don't know if the secretary had given the certificate on our behalf, has he? Yes, ma'am. Yes. Yeah, it was done by the PA. Okay, okay. I think we have various exciting sections for August. Please, we want you to keep a date. We'll always send the posters across. The webinar for next um, Saturday is on. Please, you try and register for the webinar. Download if you do not have it and join us as we bring in, in Larry Kramer uh, from from Canada who will be sharing what happens at the for construction. It's going to be an exciting section. So I hope to see everyone there. I want to thank all participants. I could see some MD. I could see Mr. Green in the house. I thank uh, Mr. Akshok and all our participants that had taken time to join this section. We are very, very grateful. Looking forward to seeing you in every other episode. We have um, two presidents celebrating their birthdays today. We have um, Emeritus 
Awata and the Veritas Daniel on behalf of SSC, we want to say happy birthday to both of you and um, pray for more years. Yeah, thank you, my president. It's a great joy to actually celebrate today. And uh, thank I'm you, happy thank to, you. Happy to be with all of you in this my special See, thank occasion. You, thank First you, thank you, us, thank you for this wonderful work. Ah, Malga. <laughs> thank you. Uh, we, if you check the chat, you'll say that there's a link to our Facebook page where you get the recording of this session for those who want to go through it. Yes. Well, thank you very much. And I want to also use the opportunity to thank all the advocates that were online that joined this section, uh, led by Engineer Jamu Badmos. Engineer Ikudo was also here. And uh, we want to thank all our safety professionals that are here. Please, when these uh, sections comes up again, it's always important for us to join we we'll always gain one or two things, no matter the experience we have. So thank you all for coming. For those that have, have not been able to acknowledge, I want to say thank you uh, for coming. And it's not intentional. We appreciate every one of us for being part of this section. And let's keep doing what we're doing. This is an hard time. Our various organizations depend on us to avoid the various losses that could come at this time. Companies are losing profit at the moment. So our effort to save and prevent losses is critical. So let's find time to come together and share knowledge together. Thank you very much, everyone. And uh, Engineer Galapati, thank you for joining us all the way from Kuwait. And all the folks from Ghana, thanks for joining this section. We appreciate everyone. Please enjoy the rest of your day. Please click the link and be able to see the recorded version of this section. Thank you. Bye. Thank Bye. you very much. Bye. Yeah. Thank you very much, Kamil. Bye bye. Take care. Uh, Ashok, thank you. <laughs> thank Long you. time. Thank you. Yes, yes. Well Long time. Thank, you. Bye -bye. thank you, everyone. Thank you, everyone from Ghana. Thank you. Thank you very much from Ghana. We appreciate you. Regional <laughs> area water. Good day, sir. Congratulations <laughs> on your birthday. birthday. <laughs> Congratulations. Happy birthday. <laughs> Thank you, everyone. Yes, sir.